Hello everyone, this is Onito Ni and welcome to another video on the countryside of Korea. By the way, for those who are new to my channel, this channel talks about the Korean way of life, Korean culture, places to visit in the countryside, and of course, I am a married immigrant, so I will be talking about our way of life here in Korea. In today's video, we will visit the birthplace of the famous Korean poet, Yongrang Kim Yonsik. I believe his work of art is famous in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, and his poems are written in the Chola province dialect. Yongrang is the pain name of Kim Yonsik. He is very famous for his literary works. He expresses in his poems the praise for nature and his appreciation of his birthplace or hometown, which is Kangjin County, my hometown too. And you can read in this, in his poems written in the 1930s to 1935s. When Korea was under the Japanese colonial rule, Yong Rang work also expressed his pessimistic worldview, and this can be seen in his poem on the 1910s to 1945. His residence is well kept, maintained, and preserved by our county for visitors to see and feel how Yongrang lived in his time. Come with me, let's take a look. As I search for information about this famous poet, I've learned that he was a streak as a father, but has a soft and emotional side as well. And he loved music. In fact, they say he was a fanatic when it comes to music. He was born to a wealthy family here in Kangjin County in 1903, but died in a Korean War during a bombing raid. And he was given the government's highest recognition for achievement in the cultural field, which they call the Gold Crown Order of Cultural Merit in 2008. Very impressive. He was and he is one of Kangjin's county's pride. I believe this is the workplace of Yong Rang. This is where most, if not all, those poems were written. As you can see, it is so peaceful, surrounded by well-cut trees, and the front yard is well organized. In the old days, they used this as their slippers. Very cute, isn't it? You can see the simplicity, but you can also feel the serenity. On the summertime, village people would come here and sit on the bench under this tree and take refuge in the heat of the sun. And in the fall, people would come here and enjoy taking their photos on the yellow colors of the falling leaves. Exciting, isn't it? Sometimes parents would bring their small children here and 
play with them in the safety of the grounds. And when children would ask about the things that they see, parents are just ready to tell their children about the history of this place. And children are quick in learning, and in their young age, they take pride on the history and the people that we have here in this county. Let's go to the main house of Yongrang. Let me guide you. This is the kitchen. As you can see, the kitchen is more or less small in space in the old days. You can see a long bench which serves for preparation of foods or a place where you can put your cooked foods or just a bench to sit while cooking. There, is, there you can see two big pots. I can imagine one pot used in cooking rice and the other pot is for cooking the soup. Actually, in the old days, Korean kitchen is considered both a place to cook and the furnish for heating the floors of the rooms during the cold seasons through the ondol heating system as they call it. Most traditional houses have kitchens like this. Women can put firewood to keep the fire going and the floors have no tiles. Maybe this other pot is used for boiling water which they can use in washing up or taking a bath. This room is very small and you can see old sewing machines. So I believe this is a working place where they can do while cooking. This is the living room and you can see Yungrang's portraits. If you have noticed, Korean traditional houses have more of a rectangular shape rather than a square one. I believe this is another heating system. Thank you. 
These jars are used for storage. This is where they put their kimchi uh, supply for the whole year, their uh, soy sauce, soy paste, and everything. This is their source of water in this house. Let's take a look on the storehouses or the storage of this house. These are tools used for farming. These tools here are used for waving and a meal when, during harvest time. As you can see, this is a well self-sufficient house, shall I say. Making this video, I realized I've learned a lot of the Korean way of life in the past and I can't help admiring this famous poet. I'm glad I made this video. I've learned so much. So guys, now we come to an end of this video. I hope you like this one. Korean culture is very rich and unique. And when you will mingle with the Koreans, you will see a lot more. But when you visit historical places like this, you feel the deeper side of the Korean culture. If you like this kind of topics, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell for you to be notified of my next videos. This is Onitoni, wishing each and every one a blissful and joyous days ahead. Annyeong! Sarangyeong!